The Mustang has new headers, but they don't exactly fit. I'm fixing them with this. Well, you saw the thumbnail. Hola! I'm Mike, the backyard mechanic, and this is the Mustang. It has new headers that don't fit quite right. Before I get to that, if you haven't heard, I lost my job as an aromacologist. I guess I don't smell as good as I thought. Here is the latest ad I'm answering. Yup, I'm gonna be a gold prospector. I've sent them an email and I fully expect a job offer soon. In the meantime, I'm getting in some practice. Yeehaw! Got me some gold! So what exactly is wrong with the headers? Well, it runs, and I've been driving it, but the fitment isn't quite right. Yeah, fitment is a word. Car guys use it all the time, but... Ugh, fitment doesn't fit. Fitment has me bum-fuzzled and gives me the collie wobbles. If you haven't been here before, this is... Not another car channel. Anyways, that's not a word. To be precise, the driver's side header rubs on the steering shaft. When I'm driving, say, on the expressway, I can feel the vibration of the engine transmitted through the steering wheel. When I make a right turn, the natural inertia tilts the engine to the left, putting a lot of weight on the steering shaft, which makes right turns so difficult it's like I don't have power steering. In contrast, a left turn is fine and normal because the engine is tilted off the steering shaft. I considered removing the steering shaft, but determined that this solution would have short-term results. So I did what all of you would do. I used the internet. I launch my browser and type my question into the search engine. I've seen more than one brilliant suggestion to grind the steering shaft. I consider this to be just slightly better than removing the shaft completely. Hey, after grinding away at the steering shaft, you should replace your airbag with a whoopee cushion. I've also seen suggestions to cut and weld the headers. I don't have a welder, but even if I did, I'd like to avoid this option because welding would ruin the silver ceramic finish. The most common approach is to use a torch and heat the spot that rubs and hammer a dent in for clearance. This is something to consider, but again, these are coated headers. This would crack the ceramic finish and reveal bare steel, which could rust. A few comments suggested shifting the steering shaft. This isn't something I had considered, so I loosened the nuts under the dashboard and tried prying on the steering shaft. Yeah, it doesn't move. There was a couple of suggestions to loosen the motor mount nuts and slide the engine to the passenger side. This is certainly feasible because the mount holes are somewhat large, but if you remember when I installed the headers, I had trouble dropping the engine onto the mount studs because the engine was already too far to the passenger side. Not a form goes by without being told you need new motor mounts because your old ones are sagging. The reason I'm not excited by this idea is because putting stiff mounts in the Mustang means a rougher ride. And this is a daily driver. Finally, a commenter mentioned to make motor mount spacers using an aluminum plate with a hole drilled into it. Now I think we have a solution, but instead of going through the rigmarole of cutting and drilling aluminum plate, I'll just use washers. The plan is simple. Lift the engine, put washers on the motor mounts, lower the engine. I found these large fender washers, which are almost the perfect size. The hole is big enough for the mount stud, and the surface is large enough to hold the weight of the engine without denting the aluminum mount. Let's get started. Before jacking up the front of the car, I block the back wheels with something. I'm using this wrench. Then, using my pry tool, I lift up on the front end. I support the front of the vehicle with this silver sharpie. Now I can get a good look at the issue. We are looking at the bottom of the driver's side header, and just behind the header is where the steering shaft enters the firewall. The ring on the steering shaft makes it obvious where the headers are rubbing. 
It appears to be about an eighth of an inch gap, which shows how much the engine moves. The headers block access to the motor mount nut from above, so it has to be accessed from underneath, looking at it from the rear. Using my 15mm ratcheting wrench, the nut was loosened up enough to be removed by hand. Repeat the same process on the other side. Before jacking up the engine, the cross member needs to be removed or else the intake will hit it. I lift my engine the old-fashioned way, not with a fancy support bar like this, but with a pedestrian piece of wood, like this. Lifting the engine moves the header away from the steering shaft and gives a clearance. I thought about this as a fix, but I couldn't figure out how I could go down the road with a jack under the oil pan. I check to make sure I have enough room between the engine bracket and the frame stud. These thin washers are really an ideal solution. A quarter inch spacer block would not easily slide in there. I would have had to loosen the engine mount bolts to get more slack. I noticed while I was in there that the headers are up against the motor mount. Man, these things barely fit. I put six washers on each side, giving the engine a 3 8 inch lift. The engine alignment is not quite on center. Before lowering the engine, I loosen the transmission mount bolts so that the engine will more easily shift side to side. And headers installed, I used a pry bar to push the engine over. This time I had success by pivoting the jack so I could pull the engine side to side until I got it to drop down on the studs. Now I can put the nuts back on underneath from the back using a 15mm ratcheting wrench. Then the passenger side. Checking the new gap I created, I expected to see more. I raised the engine 3 eighths of an inch, but it looks like I only gained about an eighth of an inch. I put the cross member back on, tightened up the transmission mount, closed the hood, and lowered the Mustang. I took it for a test drive. Wow, what a difference. I had put up with the interference too long. Things are nice and smooth again, and I have my power steering back. Hey, I got a fan! Mail? Snail mail? My esteemed Mr. Backyard Mechanic, tis with the utmost delight to peruse your visual missives in that thou hast rectified the maladies afflicted upon thy horseless carriage. Yet I must confess, thy jests do fall short of eliciting hearty amusement. I am compelled to concede that the demeanor vexes me. With the sincerest of regards, I do remain as thy steadfast admirer. Say, how old is my demographic anyway? That wraps up the O2 Sensor Saga. For good. If you missed any of the episodes, you can find them in this playlist. Or you should watch this episode. Good. Crikey! Look at all that gold!